The 1990s and 2000s were a wash of classic shooters, with many legendary developers leading the charge, like id Software, Monolith, Epic, Valve, 3D Realms, and in this case, Raven Software. While having many beloved titles under their belt, they never reached massive knockout successes, usually more often cult classics, like with their last original project, 2010's Singularity. Around the time, Singularity received a decent amount of hype by offering time powers, a complicated story, and fun shooting mechanics, often drawing a few comparisons to Bioshock and Half-Life. That overhype is likely why it received such lukewarm praise and sales, despite still being a fairly novel and entertaining shooter. Set in 2010, the island off the Russian coast, Kotorka 12, is having a massive anomalous energy spike. As Sergeant Ranko, part of a recon operation to figure out what's happening, you're sent in before things obviously go to shit and you're left in the ruins of a failed Soviet experiment at harnessing the power of the rare element E-99. Things get progressively worse as you then accidentally enter a time distortion where you save the researcher Demichev. This one action results in him successfully utilizing E-99 to conquer the world. Fortunately, a resistance group saves Ranko and tasks him to find the time manipulation device developed by Dr. Barisov. It's a slow startup, but afterwards is when the game really begins, as the TMD is the front and center for the game. You fight across the island, bypassing time shenanigans and gameplay gimmicks to close the singularity, causing all the supposed problems. It's not the smartest plot with frequent holes and inconsistencies, though that comes to the territory of time travel. While Renko remains a silent protagonist, there's often different characters chiming in to give updates and new objectives. Contrary to the devs' past experience, Singularity is a very narrative-heavy game. I'd say you spend roughly 20% of your time listening to some exposition or world-building of sorts. Audio logs can be replayed giving grim insight to the disaster and scripted flashbacks that foreshadow new encounters. While the voice acting writing is fairly good, it's rudimentary. Characters look pretty out of place and leave little impression. The setting of Kotorka 12 is fine, but stomping through broken down facilities, houses, and rail yards quickly gets repetitive and not as engrossing as Half-Life's Black Mesa, where it draws a lot of similarities from. Still, there's small touches and deviations that enhance the atmosphere, like looking at the aftermath of a failed survivor, or the strange illuminated text that seems to have impossible premonitions of the future. I guess it's a product of its time, however, it's hard to skip the story, as the game often forces you to wait for it to explain a mechanic multiple times, as if you're some sort of brainlet, like when it continually reminds you how to use the TMD. I'm somewhat disappointed how refrained the style is. In the alternate future of 2010, Russians still using conventional BMPs, Heinz, and shooting Kalashnikov hybrids feels very lame. The frequent mutant attacks and boss fights do round things out, but it still feels very small scale, not like you're fighting against a world-spanning Soviet empire. A strange step back from Raven's usually bizarre and outgoing settings. If you've ever played their games, however, Raven has been more adept at gameplay and level design with plenty of carnage. Singularity takes an interesting middle path between the slower-paced Half-Life and Bioshock story mechanics, but with the linearity of a Call of Duty campaign. Levels span a variety of objectives and challenges from ruined sewers, power plants, laboratories, and dockyards, typically having you activate a machine, acquire an item, or pick up a new upgrade for the TMD that furthers this process. Environmental puzzles frequently break up the action and revolve around using the TMD in a combination of ways. You move objects around transferring their weight to mechanisms or scale platforms, regenerate or rapidly age items to open entrances to an area, or a combination of the two. The visual presentation of the TMD and its functions are obviously pulled from Half-Life 2's Gravity Gun, although the effects used when constructing and deconstructing an object looks really flawed and never gets old. While the game does hem you into very directed pathways where invisible walls barring diversions, the minor RPG leveling up system is done by requiring E99 catches spread across the game that allow you to upgrade buffs and abilities for the TMD, similar to Bioshock's Atom. These are pretty generic stuff, increased damage, energy, health, and duration of attacks, though this requires picking up formulas that if you miss can significantly hamper your equipment choices. Aside from E99, there's weapon tech kits that beef up Renko's arsenal, turning basic firearms into total beasts. These very basic systems aren't a requirement for beating the game, but they make a handful of challenges more manageable. Larger combat encounters are generally infrequent in Singularity, preferring smaller skirmishes where you focus on using a new special power or weapon. The armament selection is fairly wide from typical bread and butter shooter favorites to more context sensitive and experimental tools. This can be a long range rifle that allows you to control the bullet until impact, and a remote grenade that rolls around the area. The aforementioned upgrades only enhance the clip size, reload speed, and damage output, somewhat lackluster considering the potential for weirder inclusions. Aside from puzzling, the TMD is often needed in combat to level the playing field. 
The aging ability can turn soldiers into dust or freeze where they stand, and the impulse ability is like a small shotgun blast sending limbs flying in all directions. The deadlock add-on creates a devastatingly effective time dilation field, pausing nearly every enemy in attack, allowing to line up shots and avoid damage with ease. Singularity has some fine scripted moments like avoiding sound sensitive monsters, gaseous environments and large boss fights that, while very easy with giant glowing weak spots, cap off stages nicely. The best ones however is when time travelling, either through opening rifts to alter the past or randomly lurching backwards to where you're suddenly fighting Cold War era troopers with 21st century technology. It's a shame that these sections don't happen more often and aren't fully integrated into the game. The time distortions do lend cool scenes of sun disintegration and reformation in real time, I just wish there was more of this outside of a few scenes. However, the main issues of Singularity are in regards to how easy the game gets. The deadlock field makes every fight a simple dispatchment process. Stun, spam, move on. The frequency of E99 drops has you unlock most major upgrades very quickly, an extended health bar and TMD energy pool removes any tangible threat early on. Many of the weapons are far too powerful and don't match the generally low enemy count. A rapid firing minigun with nearly endless ammo drops turns even the toughest of monsters into absolute mincemeat. It also makes the other weaker, less accurate weapons unnecessary. The game simply doesn't scale upwards to address your added abilities so you'll cleave through the entire game within 6 hours or so, easily 4 or 5 if you don't care for exploration. For a very story driven game with no side tasks, any multiplayer and perhaps most cryptingly, no chapter select or new game plus forcing any additional repeats through the overly long and mediocre opening first hour. If they just fixed that last point, Singularity would have much greater staying power as you could then just simply bump up the difficulty as the game progresses. No such luck here. I've always regarded Singularity as a cool yet underdeveloped and content lacking shooter whose character saved it from total obscurity. There are quite a few fans that fondly remember it as a cult classic, a hidden gem of the 7th generation. I'm left wanting Raven Software to have another go at crafting a pulpy shooter instead of more Call of Duty maps. Hard and digital copies are affordable and run well on modern OS's, so if fighting Russians and Cold War Abominations sounds fun, Singularity is another title to check out.